So this is my long-term friend and environmental inspirer extraordinaire, Matt Hocking, who has his own design company inspired by creating change for a better environment. I don't know if I've worded that well, but... I've been any way you like. <laughs> but whenever I hear him talk about something, it's with passion and gusto, and I always leave with a few ideas and very inspired. So we thought he'd be a great speaker for our environment section and how it relates to our health. Matt. Thank you, Paula. Right, well, it's a privilege to be here. Um, I also feel like uh, a little bit, in some ways, uh, an imposter being here. Not that I've been learning as we go along, which is always the best thing. So learning about touch and learning about resilience. Um, although yeah. I'm asleep for four hours this and night, so I've obviously <laughs> got some work to do there kind of thing. Um, but then I'm really thirsty about the environment. So I soak up information about the environment and our connectivity to, to the planet heavily since I was 29 and, and I started working at Eden Project. So I'm gonna kind of tell you a little bit about my practice. And some of the things we do, which don't necessarily relate to the things you've been talking about so far, they're more about planetary health. And I think the World Health Organization basically put it over that a healthy planet equals a healthy population. So I'm hearing lots of things about what we can do uh, for ourselves and social prescribing, but actually what can we do for the planet? But can I ask you, I'm going to try something I've never done before. Um, I have a neurodiversity, and so I kind of recently been uh, diagnosed. So I just want to try something. If you would join me, I invite you to either stand up if you're able to or sit down and just for one minute, actually I haven't set a timer off yet. <laughs> uh, this will only be for a minute, is to join me. I invite you to join me and let's just think about our planet, our environment. So one well, minute. I, yeah, one minute. I've never done this before. And so it's just hearing you. I think I do it and actually to calm me. So let's ground ourselves to start with. And you know, Feel your breathing, feel everything around you. I know you've been sitting down a lot today. I'm really pleased to see lots of people went outside to have a picnic at lunchtime. And um, we were lucky with the day. So, you know, we're currently hurtling at thousands of miles an hour, if not faster. It's magnificent, fragile rock um, hurling through space that we call Earth. And much like a car driving down the road and stuff, we are on a journey. On this planet and we're inhabitants of it but it's a spaceship you may have heard the term from bucky Forminster, spaceship earth and we're the crew and all of us have a role to play within that journey and all of us are working on the operating system that is this planet this fragile beautiful place that we're intrinsically part of the ecosystem we are no not dominant we are part of so just breathe into that think about us moving through space, think about the journey we're on, and then I'll tell you a bit about me. Thank you, everyone. That was a first for me. Okay, so um, it's partly to do with stilling myself. <laughs> Leap, life, environment, and passion. Or I'm really good at jumping around. I'm a 51 year old kid. I'm training illustration, not design. My sole role since 29 is a planet first approach to life. Um, sometimes I do it well, sometimes I don't. Um, my first knowledge of the planet does keep me up late at night. So I've learned a lot about things and probably have to change some habits. Um, it's fragile, it's beautiful, and we're part of this. Now, today, ooh, not quite what I was expecting, but um, I'm gonna be telling you, I've got a practice in Truro. I've been running it for 20 years. Um, there's 12 of us and we work for people and individuals and businesses all over the world. The common theme is creativity is, in my opinion, the nexus and the bridge between society, industry and the planet. And I'd like to ask another thing. I'm going to get you up and down constantly on this, by the way. Who in the room considers they're a creative? Really? Do you want to think more about that or not? So we're all creative. It's what defines our humanity our, and creativity, but we have it knocked out of us. And as creators, we are constantly ideating. I think one of our past speakers said 32,000 thoughts. That's actually 32,000 creative thoughts. 
at any one time, I think, whether it's a day, an hour. So we're constantly ideating, we're constantly thinking. And as creatives, we've all got to be to create change, whether that's deciding how we get home and go somewhere or the methods for operating our business or enjoying the life we do, the physicality, the sleep, as you think it. At Leap, we've worked on various things where we enable our clients uh, we enable our clients through creativity to address social and environmental issues. Um, I'll show you a bit more about that. So basically, 10 things. It sounded a bit self-indulgent title. I think actually as I've done this PowerPoint presentation and converted it from InDesign, it's kind of messed it up a little bit, but don't worry, it's my design pride in there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, forget the, the issues and the details. I'm going to guide you through all these little bits we do from reading to climate emergency to how powerful your pension can be um, to where you bank and we're just going to do a bit of interaction throughout my 30 minutes and then I'm done. So let's see how these slides turn out. So our work, as I said, we deal with social side. So we've been working with Bernardo's for the last couple of years. Um, Generally, the traditional design is somebody comes to you with a brief and they go, I'd like you to do this. We tend to challenge that brief and go, well, actually, let's bring in those users, those people that this service is for. So you could call it service design. Case of Bernardo's, they said they wanted just to work with young people about to leave a, a care um, journey to help them have positive, independent living. Um, they wanted to do a virtual reality augmented reality tool. I disagreed with it, but I decided we'd run a field kitchen and do life skills, making bread in a field with young people, to kind of doing a VR simulation in a field still with goggles on. I was wrong, I'm glad to see. The young people said, actually, we want the VR methods of making bread rather than actually make ourselves because it's a safe place to fail. So we're constantly learning every day and like learning that from, you know, young people that generally at 18 when they finish the care experience journey are kind of left to their own devices. So we've been working now for two, three years. We just won an international award for our work with Bernardo's. IKEA have now partnered. So that's addressing social issues that include gap housing, bringing young people in and IKEA offered to actually host a space where we got all the young people to work with us. None of the young people wanted their faces shown. So we just basically created a method that they could create their own visuality. So that's one of our kind of ways of working with people. On top of that, we work with joining up the environment. So whether that's kind of planetary health to localized health with say the AONVs. But this isn't about my work. This is about the things we do within work. And each of these things is a creative output from us. So you may, you may uh, get some or know some of these quotes, you know, the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment, not the other way around. Um, Gayford, uh, Gaylord Nelson, uh, previous US Senator. This was an illustration to actually say that all the bits you've been talking about is our natural and social capital is where it's at. We get too caught up in money, 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 and time, 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 and work harder, harder, harder. It's that consumerist society, that extractive society that we're part of. And actually where we're needing to go, a rapid space is a regenerative society. And you'll be hearing obviously more of this more. And regenerative really is, you might see it in an agro method, but it's actually putting more back in to society and the planet than we take back out. So again, a big consciousness for us. We're a B Corp. Has anybody heard of B Corps? Yeah, anybody a B Corp in the room? Just out of chance, no? So... Leap was the first B Corp in Cornwall. Um, we started our journey in 2015 and the movement started in the US in 2008. It's a movement of for profits, you, uh, people in business using our, our business as a force for good. Um, Cornwall is now the second largest uh, growth cluster outside of London for business for good businesses. And the UK is the fastest growing marketplace for B Corps. Now, B Corps is we make profit but then we choose to create new things or help society in certain ways so in leap's case we've got a giving budget we've never marketed our company um we take five percent of our turnover as a minimum and then we help social and environmental causes get their messages out there we have an application process and through that we've worked all over the world on everything from female genital mutilation to working with the nuns of saint catherine's monastery to the hammer tribe in Ethiopia on tribal empowerment to stuff locally like uh, Volunteer Cornwall was here earlier so and uh, we've done a little bit of stuff with Nuki Orchard and Luke and so 
there's loads of different pathways we do of giving back and kind of what we call that karma sort of thing, you know, not just taking kind of how we give back. So we're a B Corp. This is one of the things we do. B Corp's really important to me. In the growth cluster in Cornwall, we hope to actually look at where the future of uh, Cornwall and how it procures and thinks and acts on all levels can operate. And we're hoping we can become a can-be um, community here and join New Zealand and Scotland and the cities of New York. And that's just starting to launch in, there's an inspiration day gonna be happening at Kabila. I think it's Kabila, um, at the beginning of March, um, if you look on Eventbrite. So this is what we envision, a global economy that uses business as a force for good. The economy is comprised of a new type of corporation, the B Corporation, bless you, <laughs> and, uh, which is purpose driven and creates benefit for all stakeholders. As B Corporations, uh, et cetera, et cetera, change you know, uh, what we seek in the world from the Gandhi line, um, that all business ought to be conducted as if people and place matter. They're taking very much a people and planet approach. Um, that through our products, practice and profits, business should aspire to do no harm and benefit all. Um, we have to sign this. It's very Americanized, as you can see. Um, but all of us on certification signed up to this. And although it's for for profits, the tool behind it, the business ass assessment tool, which monitors and scores you against these five pillars, governance, workers, our teams, environment, our place, local to global, community, again, what's around us and the community our products might go out to, and customers. Um, so you could go into this impact assessment. Paul, have you tried it yet? No. Yeah, don't worry. There's no, there's no, this isn't about guilt or shame or anything like that. It's a free to use tool. And whatever your practice, your business, even if you weren't to become a B Corps, you can actually use it as a lens to look through and go, actually, how is my governance looking? And that's like, you know, if it's if you're female empowered as an organization, it will score you more because it's about balancing out. If you're LGBTQI, again, it looks at it. It's your business owner is, you know, whatever inclusivity, diversity, they look at it in those days and you get different scores. We try and balance out society. Environment, you can imagine that's you know, water and waste and use, community, how do you benefit, and customers, who do you serve? Um, and the workers, how do you look after your team? So B Corp, I use this holistic framework. It helped me grow up in business. I'm not a salesperson with B Corp, but as a creative, I'm all over the place most of the time. And I can create brilliant brands and designs, but actually the methodicalness of running a business I needed a bit of help with, this gave it to me. And on doing that, it's made me have a business that can operate at such an easier level, giving us time to work on our team. And going back to like things like team, you know, each year we report how our team are doing. Now, we're only a small business of 12. We're based in Cornwall. By the way, you're going to see lots of illustrations and pretty pictures because that is the way we do things. Trying to make, you know, information accessible and usable. Again, the PDF... Um, uh, transition into uh, PowerPoint, which I don't use, has killed off some of my graphic bits. But everything from, you know, we monitor our team's well-being. Now, our well-being dropped this year um, significantly. So we were able to see that. So we asked the team, were they willing to talk to us about it? And it was one of our teams, Siobhan, and she went by me saying, she just said, the work's getting a bit boring. I really want to do more with my skills. And you seem to be pigeonholing me into it. And so that's not what we can do. So in seeing those stats, we're able to work better with Siobhan. Actually, we've taken now our, our well-being focus to a three monthly rather than an annual. Um, and then Siobhan, we were saying actually fair distribution of work. Now, Siobhan's 23 one of the most talented creators I've come across. She approached us in lockdown. Um, she's not trained, but she just has such a, a seismic ability for creation, as well as addressing some of the gnarliest areas of sort of humanity in her work and things. So we want to keep her. And looking at what we, with our team, we've got a 96% retention rate of our team over nearly 20 years of operating. Um, really, they should go. Um, um, but for some reason, they're staying. And we think it's because every project we do is purposeful and that make, is kind of what we call making a living making a difference our grant for good so that's a pot we give away and that's what allowed us to work on hidden scars around female genital mutilation with um, uh, an Ethiopian um, uh, second generation Ethiopian in the Midlands um, and we're still working with Bethel on that um, she's just been doing films where they've introduced cutters to children they cut uh, when they were younger to kind of 
like restorative justice in a way and learning about it so we haven't done that that's we've just given the tools for uh, Bethel to do that so um to you know continue being a b corp to we run an event so it's not about a usp for leap creativity it's actually about getting everyone who's creative to get on board i won't go into this too much although i was very proud that in cop 26 i did take my action to cycle to cop 26 to deliver a message um and that was around the idea of what are our actions in society how activists do we want to be you know do we want to be somebody like my friend Oliver, who glued himself to the Houses of Parliament in his pants. Do you want to be that active? Um, or is there a different sort of activity that will support you, your health, your well-being, but also to support community and climate? Um, so I think that will do on that one. Um, a big thing for us is declaring. And I'd invite you all in some ways. It's a, an emergency is a big word. Um, but the fact that we are in it, our governments are slow, it comes down to us as people and individuals. Um, we declared a climate and ecological emergency and a social emergency back in 2019. At the same time, we released the free logo for organisations, which we were really at the time, um, created a website to allow the town halls and the parishes that all over the UK were declaring a climate emergency. But for me, there was nothing joining up. It was, it was words. So sometimes when you've got an icon like Extinction Rebellion or a logo like Nike, you kind of recognize it better. And so as soon as you've got that branding, typical designer, it starts to join up the dots. This has appeared now all over the world in different ways. And people will say, oh, we saw it on a banner in Australia at a strike and things, it's free. It's can be used but on top of that it's not just declaring and say hey i've ticked the box for declaration it's actually what is the plan what are the actions each time i'm talking it all leads back to a healthy planet equals a healthy population so all the good work you're all doing in the room kind of what ties in if you can find time and i'm sure loads of you all have your own agency within this and we can all be overwhelmed as well what do i do how do i do it what i'm trying to do is show some snippets and kind of like a pick and mix of little things you might be able to do some you're already doing others you might be able to just share with somebody else with the the declaration of climate emergency it got to such a point where we were actually asked to help write some guidelines with what's called business declares a climate emergency um so it's a network of individuals and business i think we had what's the organizations that a symposium that was out there earlier um so they're one of the declaring organizations the financial times have just declared and the more organizations, individuals that can declare, because we've got a we declare, an I declare, and a business declare, the more it becomes you know, current in the cognitive that actually there is something happening. Um, how in control is another thing. As I said, we're spaceship Earth, we're hurtling through space, um, but on this fragile ecosystem that we really, really need to look after. And this comes to what I consider one of the most powerful change act which relates nothing at all to what you're doing um so i'm going to ask you to get up and down a couple of times so say standing up if um it's a yes to one of these answers so let's sit down for the moment um stand up if your house or your business is powered by renewable energy there's no guilt or shame or anything in this, by the way. This is just questions, all right? Curiosity is one of our biggest actions. <laughs> sit down or stand up, depending whether it's a yes, stand up, uh, sit down if it's a no, if, um, if you drive an electric vehicle. So I'd be sitting down right now. Um, and then stand back up if you have a plant-based um, or vegan diet solely. Okay, thank you for your honesty. So, one of you can have a booby prize for that. Right, somebody get ready with a catch. I've got to throw this a long way. Right, you're already closest, then get ready to catch. Okay. There's your booby prize. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a, that's a plant based hand grenade. Yeah. <laughs> Pollinator bee bomb. There you go. It's nice to get our little prizes. Um, so, the idea around that is they're all fantastic things to do. You know, electric cars is going to be pros and cons over the years, lithium batteries, mining, child exploitation. Then you've got renewable energy. Really hard to go onto a renewable tariff now with what's happening with the energy crisis. Bulb have gone. Um, octopus are taking them on. Um, other renewable energy suppliers aren't taking on new um, um, customers. And then vegetarian, vegan. 
brilliant, but we're seeing a whole new marketplace of products. Where are they coming from? What are the processes in there? You know, is local buying meat and that better than not? But for me, this is where the sweet spot is, is your pension. So the one question I didn't ask is, how many of you has an ethical pension or even know if you've got an ethical pension? Me and the NHS pension, we've got no control. But have you? <laughs> <laughs> so this is... Oh, is it not? Okay, so you're not like you don't have the, the government's nest? No. Oh, uh, okay. But... Yeah, okay, okay. Well, it's a good one to know, but sometimes it's about awareness. So although I'm not a financial advisor, obviously, oh, I've already gone that fast, yeah? <laughs> um, your pension is 21 times more effective than plant-based, renewable energy, electric car, for creating positive environmental change. Typical pension, every five pounds invested in the pension, one pound leads to deforestation. The rest of it is usually... Uh, fossil fuels so kind of just looking at simple things like this so if you are on a nest or personal pension it's worth asking and looking at it it's not saying it's not a low-hanging fruit it's just a fruit that you could do our team have gradually converted we brought in advisors to talk them through i kind of did it without any thought um, my partner said i don't trust you um and when spent 500 quid with a financial advisor he said actually no ethical pensions are outperforming traditional pensions so um, because they're all invested in fossil fuels and arms and things like that so just switching is a really good thing to do now i've only got i already talked that much <laughs> <laughs> okay this one, then don't do it now, but you can see you are here. See where your bank account is as well. You know, again, we don't force our team to change or anything like that, but it's really interesting. We ran an event called Good Fest earlier this year, late, late last year, and we got the room to just look at their bank on just bank.green and actually see what your rating is on your banks. Um, again, any money that you can change where it's invested it might not do you anything more than increase your investment, but actually it's preventing and supporting lives in the future. Like we're talking next generation, the generation onwards. Sometimes we've got to get, forget about our now because where we are is where we are, but there are things we can take future is now to help future generations. And I think Paula pointed out an article that came, I've got to write it on my hand from the Lancet uh, Planetary Health um, Report which was saying that the faster we can get to net zero, the more lives we will save in the future. And then they've got lots of different stats. It was in The Guardian yesterday, I think, wasn't it? Um, there was lots of stats around, actually, this would save 2 million lives. And this would, this would um, if we walked more than we used a car, if we cycled more, it would all have these health benefits, which then go back to your social prescribing. So I'd, I'd recommend just looking at your bank account. You might not move. And Trudos, who are the best bank for ethics, aren't taking on new customers. Um, one of the things that helps our team is Climate Perks. So there's a, an initiative called Climate Perks. Um, again, you can sign up to it. It's for free. And it's basically a set of guidelines over getting your team to look at time differently and how they might travel. So in our case, the Climate Perk we put into our business for any of our team going on holiday, if they're to choose, not in the UK, they have to go over overseas but if they choose to not use flight we'll give them two extra days holiday in return for them writing up a journal about it so that's meant some team members have got the train from cornwall to amsterdam and actually experienced a new way they've had two more days all paid for on top of their sort of 30 days of holiday um i talked about activism i like to cycle a lot so i cycled to cop 26 this is my activism so there's action there's inactivist, what I call it inactivist, somebody that's just waiting for somebody else to do it. And you've probably seen um, Don't Look Up, some of you. And then there's reactivists. Reactivists are going to find it really expensive. So if we can start taking actions now in our practices, in our businesses, in our lives, for better health, for a better planet, it's going to pay off in the long run. Um, a graphic we did, which I thought was fairly uh, apt, this is from 2016. It was for the AOMB management plan. Um, but, you know, a healthy environment underpins a healthy population. Margaret Chan, World Health Organization Director General. And this was just a graphic we produced with some references around all the information. Again, taking kind of complex information. We've seen, a, for me, a lot of complex information today and just putting it in a, a way that's maybe more accessible for society. And again, when you're doing the work you do, if you can look at that, you might not all be able to afford a, a creative, but 
thinking of ways that actually how can we get more people to embrace quite complex information and as we've heard from David Attenborough it's um, we know the science it's a communications challenge so how do we communicate these things I'm at the end now um, <laughs> Like I said, these are just snapshots of some of the things we do from climate perks to changing our pensions to we walk it out in business. So, you know, whenever we have a meeting where possible, we're lucky we live in Cornwall, we try and walk it out. If I have a meeting with some of my top clients, I want to get in the water. I have board meetings. So literally, I'm, I'm not a great paddleboarder, but they come paddleboarding with me. They've got to be able to swim and look after themselves. I'm not a lifeguard. <laughs> some bits here and but it's been really brilliant because as soon as you separate people out of the business thoughts and all that clutter that's in their head and they start talking about being the being in life the human being kind of thing that's when the real stuff starts to happen so again powerful story to reimagine society think that to the place we want to be part of you know i'm all about staying positive optimistic hopeful um and act to make the world a better place and you're all already acting you're all activists in your own ways already um, and I know it can be overwhelming at times, but kind of just one, giving yourself gratitude for what you're doing, but two, kind of always working at what actually more can we do to help ourselves, help society, help the planet. And I've got this in an infinity sign because nature shows us and kind of we really much base ourselves around that leading, like nature is the boardroom, leading by nature and that is nature's not on the go all the time nature's not always the next turnover the next bit of money the next i've done this many hours and things like that nature's actually birth birth and death and rebirth it goes in cycles but we don't allow ourselves in cycles just like we're talking about sleep we need our brains to just take some time out sometimes so that's pretty much me oh and a book it's always good to have a book so thing i like lots of books how bad are bananas come yeah. come footprint of everything done by the brother of the guy that invented the internet. So they're quite a handy family. Mm -hmm. Citizen, we need to go from being consumers to citizen, having choice um, if we want to get to a regenerative society. And the last one, I'd rather, the book's hard, but look at his TED talk, it's really good. Um, quite a power couple, because his, his partner in life is Kate Roworth, who created Donut Economics. So, um, but The Good Ancestor, we've had roughly, has anybody read this or come across it? Yeah, what did you, did you, yeah. Yeah, so we, we, we've had, you know, roughly 17 billion population on Earth until now. We've got 77 billion to come. How can we support those future generations now? I had a film to do, but I can leave that off. Here's some links, if they're useful. You can share the slides afterwards. Different things from, I didn't talk about digital declutter, but simple things you can do to clutter your brain and declutter your your life is just signing out of emails and unnecessary emails yeah every email that's text-based is 0.2 grams of co2 72 percent of all internet emails are junk mail so as soon as you get rid of them the sooner you're decarbonizing yourself and giving you some sanity there's lots of different things here um climate emergency stuff a bit about me this presentation to create costs 420 grams of co2 i love a good nerdy nerdy fact thanks to this all right and last thing one hour you still watch it one hour of netflix this might be an urban myth is equal to powering your refrigerator for two years you know so you just think sometimes the power of that but from renewable energy you start changing the system so that's me there is a wonderful film but i don't think i've got time it's two minutes so that changes it. you can share it it's called piano stairs if you've never seen it vw fun theory it's about how do we get people moving more when we're using escalators and things all around the theory of change yes it's a very good lively film so that's me whirlwind speed thank you